Pastor Sam Gale. Praise God, praise God. We welcome Pastor Sam Gale. We, pa- we welcome Dr. Jean Bratton. We welcome Minister Loretta. We welcome uh, Co-Pastor Lisa Johnson, Pastor Larry Johnson. Praise God. We've got the precious Jackie Carter in the chat window. So those of you who want to communicate by way of the chat window, she's going to minister to you. And we thank God for her. Thank God for this day. Happy Father's Day to everybody all over the world. And those of you who received this recording after today, happy belated Father's Day. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. You know, you want to pump yourself up. If you want to pump yourself up up every morning, just go back to this old basic song. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Look, it can be storming outside. It can be black as can be. It can be ugly outside. But pump yourself up. Encourage yourself in the Holy Ghost. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The success of your day begins with you and your attitude. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with God. God is on the throne. He is still on the throne. He has not abdicated. He has not been voted out of office. He is on the throne. It's up to you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Praise God. In these dark and uh, evil-looking days with the coronavirus and all kinds of things going on, you've got to learn how to keep yourself pumped up. You've got to pump yourself up. And it starts with, hey, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same is the name of the Lord to be praised. So take the focus off yourself and look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So when we say Happy Father's Day, you may say, well, what's so happy about it? Well, maybe you need to pump yourself up in the Lord. Even King David said, uh, when, when, when I'm in trouble, I will trust in the Lord. And he said, I will encourage myself in the Lord. So praise God. Even at Ziklag in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30, when David and all of his men found that their, their wives and children had been carried away by the Amalekites and David's army, these mighty men of God threatened to stone him to death. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He went before the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, we want to teach you today how to go before the Lord, why you need to go before the Lord, and to stay in his presence until the anointing comes. We're talking about the anointing. It's the anointing that's going to get you from sun up to sun down. It's the anointing that's going to keep you in perfect peace as you sleep. It's the anointing, Gene Bratton, that's going to give you sweet sleep. And so every Uh believer ought to know, every believer ought to know how to get into that place, how to get into that place. Hey, a lot of people are are, are bent out of shape. There's no choir to sing to them now. You you all don't have a choir to sing to you now. No choir to entertain you. No, No pastor to stand in front of a pulpit to entertain you. And you know good and well, I ain't going to try to entertain you. Because that's, that's not my calling. He didn't call me to be Sammy Davis Jr. Or, or Jerry Lewis or Dean Martin. He called me to preach the gospel. Later. He didn't call me to be Flip Wilson or Bill Cosby. He called me to be Leroy Carter to preach the gospel. And so everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know their Heavenly Father. And I thank God for what Ryan said. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Father's Day to God the Father. Praise God. Happy Father's Day to God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the triune God. He who told Jesus to teach the disciples when you pray, pray our Father which art in heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk to you about a message the Lord put on my heart last night and um I had no idea that I was going to be coming this way until last night. And the Lord said to minister to you and everybody listening, 
and you share the share the recording with your friends and tell your friends. Everybody listening ought to benefit from this message today, and it's entitled "How to Avoid Ministry Burnout." How to avoid ministry burnout? You will say, "Well, I'm not a minister," I, and I come back at you. Yes, you are. You say, "Well, I'm not called to preach." Well, you're still a minister. Well, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I don't have a seminary degree. Uh, 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 you don't need one. Oh, well, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have any responsibilities in the church. Well, you have responsibilities as a child of God. If you're married, you have a ministry. If you're a father, you have a ministry. Hey, Dad. If you got children, you have a ministry. Well, what's my ministry? If if I'm a father, you know. Uh, 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 people will ask, well, train up your child in the way in which he should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. That's a lifelong thing. Even after your children turn 21, they still need your help. Praise God. I thank God. Got a nice little package from uh, one daughter and greetings from another daughter. And, 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 and we'll hear from my son later on. And Jackie gave me a nice Father's Day package. Jackie's so sweet. She's so sweet, so precious irreplaceable, irreplaceable. She, I know she wants me to put that in documentation and, and get, a notar get that notarized, but you're ir irreplaceable, Jackie Carter. And I love you and I thank God for you. Even some of my uh, 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 adopted children, uh, or I've heard from them, praise God, a goddaughter, and, and, and she's the daughter of a pastor and two co-pastor in New York, Stasha Lee, from, originally from Jamaica, and Stasha, my goddaughter, got engaged recently, praise God. And I have a, I have a goddaughter in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and one day, several years ago, I was preaching in Chester, Pennsylvania, and, and she and her mother came to our church, and then they started coming regularly. And then one day she said, Pastor, Pastor Leroy, I need a father. I don't know where my father is. This, this girl was only about 13, 14 at the time. She said, I don't know where my dad is. I haven't seen him in five years. I need a father. Will you be my father? And so I became her godfather from that moment. And this young lady is now in ministry and ministering to others. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of us can be Men, we can be a father to somebody's child, and it starts at home. Be a, first of all, be a good husband, be a good father, then be a good grandfather, and a good great grandfather. Heard from one of my granddaughters uh, yes this morning. She sent me an "I love you, pop pop" message. Oh, praise God! You know that does my heart good. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're excited about what God is doing. Happy Father's Day, everybody. And let's look at, uh, we're going to minister how to avoid ministry burnout. Every one of you need this. If you're a homemaker, you need this. Even if you're not married, you need this. If you've got a job, you need this. Uh, uh, if, if you're a, a worker in the church, you need this. If you have an assignment, you need this. Pastor, you need this. Co-pastor, you need this. Choir director, you need this. Deacon, you need this. Bishop, you need this. Everybody needs to hear this message today, how to avoid ministry burnout. We're going to look at ministers who will burn out, what burnt them out, and how to, how to, how to, how to get back up on top, got to get back up. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been down there. Uh, Dr. Gene Bratton, hey, Pastor Lisa Johnson, y'all know I've been down there. Ain't, it ain't happy down there. Down where, Pastor? Down on the bottom, on the bottom, bottom rung of the, of the ladder, uh, uh, down in the muck and the mire, down where King David said in Psalm 40, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry, and he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Been down there in the pit, ladies and gentlemen. And now, having been there, we can show you how to get out, how to avoid that pit, first of all. But if you're there, there is a way out. 
First Corinthians uh, lets us know, no temptation has taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will also, will all, along with the temptation, make the way of escape. So praise God. Praise God. We thank God. We're going to ask um, Minister, uh, Co-Pastor Lisa Johnson to lead us in prayer. And then we're going to ask... Uh, uh, after the prayer, we're going to ask uh, uh, Sister Florence Gaffney to, to, to read our scripture. And the scripture, Florence, is a short one, Matthew 11, okay. 27. Matthew 11, 27 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, 27 to 30. Let's ask uh, our prayer warrior to come and lead us, first of all. Okay. Am I now or they? I'm sorry. I'm so, my mistake. I, I'm sorry to cause that that um, misunderstanding. Let's ask um, Florence to read the scripture first. Then we will have oh. the prayer. Okay, Matthew twenty-seven to thirty. Matthew. 11, 27 11. to 30. Yes, okay. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, Matthew 11, chapters 21, 20, 27 to 30, excuse me. All right. Mm hmm. Is there anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Sister Florence Gaffney. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be led in prayer by Co-Pastor Lisa Johnson. If Lisa is not on, then let's go with um, our prayer warrior in uh, Marysville, Pennsylvania, Ryan Trugler. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today for, for making another day and letting us rejoice in it. Lord, we want to thank give thanks to all the fathers out there, especially you, Lord, because you are our Heavenly Father. And Lord, we ask you to give Pastor Carter the, the wisdom, the courage, the knowledge to give us your word again today. And Lord, we just want you to bless this great nation and the leadership and the leadership of Israel and bless that nation as well. And bless this online ministry, Lord. <clears throat> and we give thanks for all that you do and letting us re rejoice in it and letting us uh, keep it on, keeping on walking the walk, talking the talk with you, Lord. And Lord, we just want to say, we, you know, we thank you, we worship you, we love you, glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate you very much. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, um, when Ryan mentioned the Heavenly Father and he mentioned Jesus, and Jesus said, I and my Father are one. So Jesus yeah. is our Lord and Savior, and he's one with the Father and one with the Holy Ghost. So there's no mistake in saying that when, um, when we, we want to know what the Father is like, we look to Jesus because Jesus said, I and my Father are one. 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 We serve a triune God. We worship God the Father. We worship God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. So when we talk about God, we're talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Uh, not three gods, but a triune God. A triune God. And they are in agreement. They are in agreement. And so we bless God and we thank God. Uh, for for um, 
the Word of God. And, and I added that 27th verse to our presentation today because we're really going to be looking at verses 28, 29, and 30. But um, the Father is revealed in that 27th verse of Matthew 11. And, and since we're greeting everybody with a happy Father's Day, mm-hmm. and we see the Father in verse 27, as Florence Gaffney so well read, read it for us, mm-hmm. all things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no mm-hmm. man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any mm-hmm. man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Only Jesus knows the Father as the Father really is, truly is, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to know who God is, then you need to know Jesus. Because Jesus will reveal the Father to you. How? Through the Holy Ghost. And so all these people who want to know God, I want to get close to God. I want to know God and this. And and they don't want you talking about Jesus. And they don't want you talking about the Holy Spirit. Blah, duh. Duh. Ain't no way you can learn about the Father, ladies and gentlemen, without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He reveals the Father. He reveals the Son to us. And so as we get, get our heads on right and our hearts right, and, and listen, to Jesus said, no man comes unto the Father but through me. That is why you need a relationship with Jesus. It, it, it means more than just going to church or finding an online church where somebody can say something that's going to meet your needs or meet where you are in life. Ladies and gentlemen, and I know uh, we've got a lot of church shoppers and the church hoppers. You know, you could go from one ministry to another to try to get something that's going to tickle your ears and scratch the inside of your ears and make you feel good. And, and if, it's, if it's something that's going to challenge you about your lifestyle or something's going to cause you to uh, change your way of living, uh, a lot of you won't even listen to it. And, 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 and that's one of the problems with the church today. We've got so many people, they know more than God and, and, and refuse to obey God. When God appoints you or assigns you to a ministry, that is where you ought to be until God releases you. And if that ministry is corrupt, God will move you out of it. But some of us need to know how to go to God to get rest for our soul. Some of us are in torment. Some of us are worn out, burned out, uh, frustrated because we're not at the right place where God has sent us. There are a lot of people whom, whom we have ministered to over the last seven years on this online church who need to come back to the online church. Some of them have gotten out there, gotten confused, gotten messed up. Some of them don't even go to church anymore. Some of them hide and, and seek, play hide-and-go-seek uh, at, at the church hour. In other words, they're hiding, they're hiding under the covers until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. When 1 o'clock in the afternoon comes, Gene Bratton, they stick their heads out of the covers, and they look and say, okay, it's safe. Church hour is over. Then they get up and go about their daily lives. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to hide and play hide and go seek peekaboo. I'm watching you because uh, God knows you. All you need to do is repent. Get back where God has placed you and planted you and, 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 and then stay there until God relieves you and sends you to another place. A lot of people would have peace in their lives if they would do what God God has assigned them to do, not what their minds tell them or what their hearts tell them or what their friends or relatives or neighbors tell them what to do. A lot of people in the body of Christ are messed up today, ladies and gentlemen, because they cannot take instruction from God. So, so Ryan just confirmed uh, about the Father, and, and I went to Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal to him. We see a, we see a, a very uh, specific blessed teaching in this, ladies and gentlemen. What Jesus got, he received from the Father. The Father taught Jesus. And then now Jesus teaches us. 
But if, if Jesus had not obeyed his father, then this whole world would be corrupt and messed up. But Jesus obeyed his father even unto death. So that's why uh, the, the Christian, uh, being a Christian is so important. Jesus obeyed his father unto death. Nothing shall separate us from God the Father because of the obedience of Jesus Christ to his father. Well, let me apply this to our lives. If you have been disobedient to your father, or if your father's still living and you're, you disobey your father, you diss your father, you kick your father to the curb, you hate your father, and there are people listening to me. Uh, they never knew their father. Many, some of you, your father may be dead. You never knew your father. All you heard was what your mother said about your father. And, and some of you have gotten a, a distorted picture of your father. And, and, and I'm talking about people who are listening by recording. Some of you have gotten a distorted picture of your father. Why? Because granny told you this, or grandpa told you this, or, or cousin so-and-so said this, or, or your mom said this, and you never knew your father. Well, there's nothing you can do about that but seek the Lord for the truth. But let's look to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is a good uh, Father's Day message. I'm preaching two messages today at the same time. This is a good Father's Day message. If you want to know the Father, then you've got to know Jesus. Mm. If Man. you refuse to get, have Jesus in your life, you'll never know the Father. You'll never know your purpose in life if you deny Jesus Christ. If you refuse to be born again, and, and, and Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't even understand the Father unless you're born again. Then why are you putting off getting saved? Mm. And some of you out there listening need to, need to wake up and smell the coffee. Mm -hmm. You ain't got forever, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have forever. Some of you, mm. I mean, you, hey, 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 hey. All I'm right. knocking on the door. Right. In three more years, I'll be 80 years old. Well, no, two more years, I'll be 80. It might not give it to see 80. I expect to see 100. But in case uh, I don't, ladies and gentlemen, how long do you think you can put off meeting your, your encounter with God? How long do you think you can run your life without having a father? This little girl 30 years ago, about 30 years ago, she said, Pastor Leroy, I need a father. I don't know my father. Will you be my father? And I became her godfather. Still am. Praise yeah. God. And she had the sense enough to know that she needed a father. She needed an authority figure in her life, that her mama could not do it all. And her mama is a pastor, a godly woman. But she knew that her mama couldn't do it all. She needed a father. And a lot of you need a father. Oh, you might be 50 years old. You need a father. You need an authority figure. You need somebody to teach you about Jesus. But if you're so busy church hopping and church shopping, you'll never find the father. Because you're not going to find a father that fits your idea of what a father, because you never knew what a father is. Jesus reveals to us who the father is, what kind of nature he has, what he does, what he thinks, how he acts. And we learn all about God the Father through the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so you need to be born again in order to understand God the Father and the kingdom of God. And to be born again, you need to repent, confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and ask Jesus to come into your life and be your Savior, and then commit your life to him for the rest of your life to him. And stop all this church hopping and church shopping and church nonsense, because I know how a lot of y'all are. I say, y'all, yeah, I've been out there, okay? Pick and choose, my pastor. I, I'm picking and choosing. I ain't, I ain't getting no pastor to drive a Chevy. I want a pastor to drive a Dodge. I ain't pick. I don't want a pastor to like chicken. I want a pastor to like fish fillet. I don't want a pastor uh, uh, like uh, 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 Old Spice. I want a pastor who... I'll uh, put uses Aramis, Aramis, whatever that mess is they put on them to make them smell sweet. Okay. And so, okay. so we pick and choose, you know, we quantify and qualify our pastor, and he made nothing, absolutely nothing, may be coming out of his mouth. But he looks sharp. He he wears, wears Stacy Adams shoes. He wears a three piece suit. He he got a semi curl in his hair. 
where he shaves his head bald, uh, and he drives a, uh, a, a Dodge, or he drives a Maserati, or he drives yeah. a Beamer, or Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to cut that mess out. That ain't going to get you into heaven. Mm-hmm. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Praise God. Happy Father's Day, Wes. Happy Father's Day, Larray. Happy Father's Day, Stace. Happy Father's Day, Naomi. Happy Father's Day, Doug. Happy Father's Day, Nicole. Praise God. Jackie and I are blessed to have six, and we thank God for you, and we want Mm -hmm. to be an example for you. Praise God. Now, let's get to the heart of the message, how to avoid ministry burnout. So I'll I'll condense this and try to make it uh, a little bit uh, uh, palatable so you can chew on it. Okay, Mm -hmm. there are so many people out there, and you're listening. You're just plain burnt out. You're just plain burnt out. Jackie asked me this morning, how you feeling? Tired, achy, (laughs) and sciatic nerve kicking. Sciatic nerve been kicking for a while. But, hey, I ain't quitting because Jesus said, with his stripes, I'm healed. I'm getting up every day. I'm walking my two miles and doing my stretches. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm I'm laying on my rolling on my sciatic stretcher. Hey, man. oh no, no, no! You you will not say I gave up and I quit. No, as long as there's breath in my body, I'm gonna trust the Lord, and I'm not gonna just sit around waiting on my miracle. Hello, I'm exercise, mm-hmm. and so praise mm-hmm. God. But then there are times when if I feel like staying in bed late, I'm staying in bed late. Those of you who you who really know me know it's not good to try to call me on a Monday unless it's an emergency. Because mm. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still this kind of guy. Mondays, that's my day for rest. Okay, yeah, I got to okay. get back to making Monday my day of rest. Because mm. a seven day a week thing can burn you out. Seven days mm. a week, giving, 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 ministering, ministering, ministering. It can burn you out, Gene Bratton. It can burn you out, Ryan Trugler. It can burn you mm-hmm. out, Sam Gale. It can burn you out, Elijah. Seven days a week. You need a little bit mm-hmm. of time. And the body Mm -hmm. needs time, and your mind needs time, and your family needs time, your wife needs time, or your husband needs time, and your children need time. So we're going to talk about today how to avoid ministry burnout. By the way, I said to Jackie, after I finish preaching, I'm going back to bed, baby. (laughs) (laughs) And and Florence, she knows I'm serious. Y'all might laugh, and it's all right to laugh, but she knows I'm serious. I go back to bed every Sunday after I preach. Because it yeah, takes energy. Even, okay. even, even in an online church, it takes energy. I'm not just reading some dissertation to you. I'm preaching from the heart of my soul and letting the Holy Ghost mm-hmm. use me. And, 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 and when I finish, I, I realize I have expended energy. The Holy Ghost has used me, and I go back to mm-hmm. bed. And another mm-hmm. thing, Jackie Carter will tell you, Jackie will tell you, my husband takes naps. Okay. He takes naps. All now, right. you know, there are people in the body of Christ, and I know some of you are listening, you don't take naps. You think mm. it's lazy to take a nap. And some of you came up in, in the culture where uh, taking a nap was a sign of weakness. Well, I beg to differ with you. I wish I had learned this a long time ago. I started mm-hmm. taking naps when I started college. I was 17 years old when I started college. Mm-hmm. I wish I had learned Florence Gaffney to take a nap mm-hmm. during elementary school. <laughs> okay, I hear you. <laughs> I started yeah. taking naps in college, 17 mm-hmm. years old. Every day I took a nap. Okay. And mm-hmm. then in college, every day I'd, I'd, I'd line up morning classes, go back to my dorm, take a nap, and in baseball mm-hmm. season I'd go to baseball practice. That was my mm-hmm. routine. That was my okay. routine. And, mm-hmm. and then I went to the military. In the middle of Uncle Sam, he said, no, boy, get up out of that bed. Who do you think you are? Where are you from? Who told you you can take a nap at 1 o'clock in the afternoon? Uh-huh. This is Uncle Sam's army. This ain't your mama's house. Get up out of that bed, boy. <laughs> and for two years, two years, I could not take a nap. Two years, the Green Berets, they said, uh-uh, you ain't napping with us. We got work for you to do. We got to go behind enemy lines and plant some explosives. We can't be napping on the job. 
But okay. ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. I take a nap every day. Jackie Carter mm-hmm. will tell you, yeah, sometimes he takes two naps a day. Oh, and then okay. Jackie might even say, if, if, you know, she, yeah, I've known times he's taking three naps a day. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. because, because I've learned, the Holy Spirit has learned me how to avoid burnout. Uh, See, if you've uh, ever burned out, you know mm-hmm. where I'm coming from, Gene Bratton. Lisa Johnson, mm-hmm. you know where I'm coming from. Karen Herzog, mm-hmm. you know where I'm coming from. Alan Noel, you know where I'm coming from. If you've ever burnt yourself out, you know what it's like to be in a stage of burnout. You can't help, and you ain't no good to anybody. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're just a, a, I start to say, a pain in the, in the run. And you're a pain in the rear. You're a mm-hmm. pain to your wife. You're a pain to your children. And your children be going around and say, Happy Father's Day, Dad. Take a nap. Your, mm-hmm. your, your children say, gee, I sure wish he'd take a nap. Or your mm-hmm. wife says, I sure wish he'd take a nap. We should go fishing or do something. Because if you're burnt out, you can't help anybody. Mm-hmm. And so we want to relate this to the church because there are a lot of pastors out there burnt out. Well, what's mm-hmm. burnout? Burnout is that point, that point at which a pastor, church leader, or a missionary gives up, unable or unwilling to continue in the ministry. I was thinking the other day about a, a friend um, who, when we were in the American Baptist Association, and, and my first wife and, and uh, Rachel had suffered from kidney failure. It was such a mm-hmm. shock to us and to the church, and she mm-hmm. was just incapacitated. And then we didn't have any insurance, didn't have any money, and so mm-hmm. her medical bills were in the tens of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we got a call from uh, the American Baptist churches as they come and become a part of our fellowship. And then I, mm-hmm. we did. We took our, our little ministry, Deliverance Tabernacle, into the American Baptist Fellowship. And, um, and then we joined, I joined the American Baptist men. I used to drive all over Pennsylvania, Sellins Grove, way up there in the Shemokin, just to go to their meetings. But then mm-hmm. one day, we received a call from the Valley Forge headquarters, uh, Pastor Carter. The American Baptist men have heard about your... Uh, your wife's medical challenges and your financial challenges and that you, mm-hmm. you're you in debt, uh, uh, tens of thousands of dollars. And we mm-hmm. have decided that uh, once a year we adopt a family or a situation where they're overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And we would like to... We would like to adopt your family and pay off your wife's medical bills. Oh, praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord Jesus. I Mercy. mean, we're, we're talking, I think it was at least at that time $23,000, which was a whole lot of money those, in those days, a whole lot of money mm-hmm. now. And, mm-hmm. and, and they paid off every penny. In fact, they, they had a, 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 a pastor named Ernie. Ernie negotiated with every medical uh, carrier, everyone we owed money to, and they, Ernie's negotiations, Ernie worked hard and paid all of our bills. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. don't ever put anybody down because of their denomination or their skin color and, 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 or, or uh, their church affiliation. Then, about a couple months after we paid our bills, they, they paid our bills, I received a call from American Baptist Headquarters, Pastor Carter, I want you to embrace yourself. Sit down. Mm. We got some news for you. Ernie committed suicide. Oh, okay. They said Ernie rented a cabin up in the mountains, and he went and killed himself. No. no. And I cried. Mm. It hurt so much. Yeah. To know that. One who has fought so hard for me and my family, a pastor mm. wow. who negotiated with our creditors, who really didn't wow. know my family but had the love for us to get us out of that debt because we couldn't pay those debts. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And they told me Ernie had cancer, and he oh. didn't tell anybody about it. And mm-hmm. it got to him too much, and he went and killed himself. Yeah. They said, we just wanted you to know that. That mm-hmm. was hard. Still is hard. Yeah. yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about pastor burnout. Not just pastors, but ministry burnout. You don't have to be a pastor to benefit from this sermon. You can be the choir director. You can be the song leader. You can be the Sunday school teacher. You can be the praise team leader. You can be the janitor. You can be the usher. You can be the pastor's spouse. Pastor's spouses are suffering burnout. Mm -hmm. Church leaders are suffering burnout. Because, you know, church people put so much weight on their pastors. I mean, they expect pastors to do everything for them, pray for them, read the scripture for them, select the scripture that they study during the week. Uh, uh, we expect pastors to do everything. Pastor, uh, uh, just want to call you, I got this hangnail. And this hangnail. And, 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 and what should I do? It's irritating me. What should I do? And they call you for for. Everything, Pastor Sam Gale, from hangnail to cancer. Mm. And they expect you to take your, your time out. And your phone rings all day long, every day. Mm. And I used to be in that. And they, I would get calls, Pastor, I'm stuck at the supermarket and I need a ride. Can you come <laughs> and pick me up at the market? Mm. And, and you know what? They expect you to come to the supermarket and pick them up. Why? Because we pay you salary. Well, okay. And so I had to, I had to bless God, let God take me to the place where I had to say, that's it. Enough is enough. All you know, right. enough is enough. I ain't going to be everybody's flunky. All I'm right. not your, your, your indentured servant. I'm not mm-hmm. your slave. Keep your salary. You don't own me. I'm mm-hmm. going to get me a life. And I'm talking to a lot of you out there. You need to get you a life. And yes, mm-hmm. Jackie, I'm talking to myself. I need to get me a life and let so, you live your life. Okay. Because we're talking about pastoral burnout. We're talking about mm-hmm. ministers' burnout. Uh, you, yeah. you, you're, you're a good Sunday school teacher. And, 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 and they expect you to be there every Sunday. And, and, uh, uh, folks don't, you know, you, you purchase your Sunday school materials, you give them out, and if people don't keep Sunday school materials, mm. you go to Sunday school and nobody's got any materials, nobody's studied. I mean, they can burn you out by their no co- non-commitment. Mm. Or, or you're, you're, you're a good decorator. You, you have a good creative hand for decorating the church. Can you decorate the church on Sunday? Not only do you have to decorate the church, you got to take down the decorations. You got to clean the church, and don't let and don't be a good janitor, mm. because they will wear you out. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about burning people out without showing them some respect, w- without doing due diligence, and and so here's what we're looking at. We're looking at these signs in ministry. Stress, stress. Got some pastors walking around like that karate expert in that movie. I'm going to get you, sucker. Mm-hmm. And he's going through the park, woo, woo, walking, turning, woo, 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 woo. We've got pastors like that karate expert in that movie. I'm going to get you, sucker. He's going around looking for which one of y'all are going to make my day today. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and, and, and when a pastor comes to church on a Sunday morning. And he's looking around, which one of y'all going to make my day? He ain't ready. Gene Redden, he ain't ready to minister the love of Christ. Mm-hmm. We've got people suffering depression. How can they help you if they're suffering depression? Mm-hmm. How can they help you when they're always down in the pits? We've mm-hmm. got pastors, ministers, church workers, insufficient sleep and rest. 
insufficient mm-hmm. sleep and rest. Then Jackie will say, well, how much rest do you need? You, you going to take another nap? Yeah, yeah, I, yep, 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 I'm taking another one. Well, how much do you need? I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> okay. We've got people suffering from spiritual dryness. I mean, ain't nothing. They ain't saying nothing. They ain't saying nothing. They take their text and they, they go through the motion of preaching but ain't saying nothing. No Holy Ghost anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke, ladies and gentlemen. It's the anointing. And then they got, they got some, and I've been guilty. They talk too long. You talk too much. You need to know when to shut up. You need to know when to cut it. Uh, we've, we've got signs of loss of motivation for ministry. Well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for another church. I think, I think I'll search for another church. And, and some churches, they have, they have the computer. You put your name in the computer, and they run you all over the country. They run your name and your, 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 your resume all over the country, and somebody's going to hit up on you and say, okay, come on out to Arizona. Come on up to Alaska and preach. We got people have feelings of isolation. We've got a lot of Elijahs in the ministry. Elijah's teaching Sunday school. Elijah's in the food ministry. I'm the only one here. I mean, you're supposed to feed 200 people on Sunday, and you're the mm-hmm. only one show up for the kitchen committee. Whoa, it's time to take a good look at stuff then. Come on, somebody. Mm-hmm. You're on the kitchen committee. You've got 200 guests coming, and you're the only one to show up. Mm-hmm. It's time to reevaluate that ministry. Feelings mm-hmm. of isolation. Elijah. I'm hiding in this cave, God, because I'm the only one you got left. Ahab and Jezebel then killed off all your other servants. Um. And God had to reveal to Elijah, no, I've got 7,000 more who have not surrendered to Baal. We've got um, symptoms like susceptibility to temptation. Uh, And so many pastors, so many church leaders are tempted Women tempted by men. Nowadays, women are tempted by other women. Men are tempted by men. I saw on Facebook yesterday a photo Mm. of a church here in America and and, and a couple together and the pastor and the first lady. And the, the first lady had a thicker mustache and a thicker beard than the pastor. Pastor and first lady. The first lady was a dude. The first lady was a dude, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to go to a church where the first lady is a dude. I ain't going to a church where the first lady is a dude. Mm. We're talking about people messed up because they don't have a connection, Ryan, with God the Father through Jesus Christ. I mean, Mm. people start doing their own things, thinking their own things, and wanting to do whatever they want to do, and whatever Satan will put in their mind, they're going to do it. And then we, we have a lot of hard-working, honest pastors who are suffering burnout because they just give their all to the people. They give their all to the people. They give everything they have. They give, give, give until they don't have anything else to give. And then they don't have someone to pour into their spirit. Every pastor ought to have someone they can turn to to pour into their spirit to minister to them. I thank God for my pastor, Gus Roman, in Philadelphia. I thank God for uh, Pastor Gene Bratton. Thank God for pastors Mm -hmm. Larry and Lisa Johnson. Thank God for Pastor Mark Moyer up in Lancaster County. Thank God for my cousin, Pastor Tyrone Carter. And I thank God Mm -hmm. for my sister, Pastor Jackie Hamilton. I praise God. They pour into my spirit, ladies and gentlemen, to help build me up. And I can't thank God enough for... uh, the number one minister in my life, Jackie Carter. Praise God, who mm-hmm. understands me, and God uses her mightily to help build me up when I'm torn down. All right. So we're talking about how to avoid burnout. Let me just give you a few burnout statistics, and then we talk about how to avoid burnout. Just take this into consideration. 1,500 pastors leave the ministry each month due to moral failure, spiritual burnout, or contention in their churches, fighting in their churches, fighting those deacons, fighting that stewards board, 
fighting that finance committee, fighting those other ministers who are cutting your throat, stabbing you in the back. 80% of pastors feel unqualified and discouraged in their roles as pastors. Listen to this. 80% of pastors feel unqualified and discouraged in their roles as pastors. 84% of pastor spouses feel unqualified and discouraged in their role as pastors. I didn't, I didn't ask you for a preacher, God. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask you for this. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, when, I didn't, when I married him, I didn't, had no, no clue that our life was going to go in this direction. I didn't ask to come to Chester, Pennsylvania to be a pastor's wife. See, I've heard this before. I didn't ask for this. And when, when, he, when he said he loved me, he said he's going to take me to Hollywood. Hey, take me there. And here I am. He took me to Chester, Pennsylvania. Mm. Now I'm in the pits. I've heard that. And, and God honored us even while we were there because we were faithful and diligent, even though we grumbled to God and asked for a change. And we had to learn how to, to blossom where God planted us where people were hurting, where people did not know Jesus. People were in a churchy community, but they did not know the Father. And Wes, you were there with us. We labored in that city and taught a lot of people about our relationship with God the Father. Dr. Gene Bratton came out of that background. We met Lisa and Larry Johnson and Mark Moria and many others, and we taught people about having our relationship with the Father. In a churchy community where people knew how to do church, oh, they knew how to do the church. Us know how to do church. But they did not know how to do Jesus. Listen to this. 70% of ministers say that the only time they spend studying the Word is when they are preparing their sermons. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody needs to wake up and smell the coffee. 70% of American pastors say the only time they study the Word is when they're preparing their sermons. And you wonder why we're in the mess we're in? Listen to this. Almost 40% who were polled in in this poll said they have had an extramarital affair since beginning their ministry. 40%, Dr. Jean Bratton, that means 40% of those who are willing to tell the truth. A lot of them didn't tell the truth. They bypassed that question. Extramarital affairs during their ministry. Amen. 80% of seminary, 80% of seminary and Bible school graduates who enter the ministry will leave the ministry within the first five years. Seminary does not train you to pastor. Seminary did not train me to deal with folks in Chester, Pennsylvania, or folks in Philly, and now folks in Georgia. Seminary can't train you how to deal with nasty people, mean people, backstabbers, manipulators, liars, deceivers. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been to churches where I sit, uh, the, the, the first two rows of deacons or the first two rows of trustees, they all sit there and cross their legs and put their chin in their hand and just look, waiting for you to stumble and fall. Been there, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't nothing you're going to say going to touch their hearts because they're ungodly, hard-headed, hard-hearted people. Been there. Mm-hmm. Oh, we just wait. Give him time. He'll put a noose around his neck. Or we'll find a way to, to assassinate him and get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Been there too. Been assassinated, been gotten rid of. Yeah. 90%. Okay, here's another. Pastors are 35% more likely to be terminated if they work less than 50 hours weekly. I mean, there are people who spy on you to see how much work you're really doing. Mm -hmm. Some pastors have learned how to do less work and get more money, how to delegate authority, let people do the work for them, collect a big check. But the majority of pastors are scuffling. 
They're breaking their stones, ladies and gentlemen, to work 60, 70 hours a week into the late hours. And you know who's paying the price? Their spouses, their families, their children, their grandchildren. They're being neglected. And yeah. also, when pastors work this hard and this long, they're also destroying their own health. If you're not spending time before the Lord, not spending time studying Scripture, not spending time praising God, not spending time getting filled with the Holy Ghost on a daily basis, you are just destroying yourself. You're burning yourself out. You're burning up your internal organs. You're burning up your kidneys, your liver, your stomach. You're, you're, you're constipated. You can't go to the bathroom. Uh, you got high blood pressure. You're taking pills. Need I go on? Florence, mm -hmm. should I keep on going? No, I hear you, Reverend Carter. I hear you. Tell it like it 80%. is. Thank you, Florence. Eighty percent of pastors say they do not have sufficient time to spend with their spouse. I know that's true in my house. Eighty yeah. percent of pastors don't have sufficient time to spend with their spouse. Mm -hmm. And so if, uh, in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, if you're not spending time with her, somebody else spending time with her. No, this no. is a lot of cases. Mm. Or, or, or if you're a woman pastor, you're not spending time with your husband. Somebody else spending time with your husband. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm mercy. Mm -hmm. Forty-five 45% of pastors have experienced burnout and depression and have to take a break from ministry. 45%, mm. mm -hmm. almost 50% of pastors need to take a break from ministry. Now, I'm compiling these statistics because I'm getting ready to write a new book, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting ready to write a book entitled How okay. to Avoid... Uh, ministers burnout and mm -hmm. and after that and all this is leading up to our getting property and building a retreat area for pastors and ministers that's our mm -hmm. goal by this time next year we hope to be building a retreat area for pastors where pastors, mm -hmm. can, pastors can come and spend a couple of days get away um. from all the uh, trials of life and spend some quiet time before the Lord Get back into reading their scriptures. Get back into praying. Get away from the hustle and the bustle. Mm -hmm. Get loose from that depression. Learn how to touch the heart of God. Learn how to tap into the resource of God's strength and energy so that you can get back out there and minister in the name of Jesus. That's what we mm -hmm. intend to do. Mm -hmm. That's the vision. That's the mm -hmm. vision. So pray for that. Pray for that. God will give us the land and give us the buildings and that pastors from anywhere in the country can come and stay there for free and get healed mm -hmm. and get a rest, get a vacation, get away from the people that are pulling them down, get away from the bitterness, the strife, the depression, the agony of life, mm -hmm. and to tap into Jesus and to touch mm -hmm. the heart of the mm -hmm. Father and to get them. A fresh anointing on their life. It is so much needed, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at 50%, I'm sorry, 80% of pastors who don't even study the Bible until it's time to build their sermons. Mm. And lets us know that people are spending too much time doing too many non-essential things. And we're in a culture where the culture expects us to do more and more. And so... God's people mm. are dropping off like flies. Mm. So you get a crazy preacher like me says, let's build a retreat area for pastors. Let's invite mm. pastors. Yeah, right. And and once 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 that's done, I, I pray the pastors will make use of that facility. I mean, you mm -hmm. offer a facility to a pastor, you just get here. You need some rest. Come on, we'll take mm -hmm. care of you. We'll feed you. We'll provide for you. We'll give you a quiet atmosphere. You just get here and expect your mm -hmm. life to change. I mean, that's a deal. Gene Bratton, that sounds like a deal to me. Mm -hmm. So there are, Amen. Amen. there are many people experiencing burnout, not just pastors, ministers' wives, ministers' wives. There will be a time when uh, I say, hey, Jackie, Gene, and my sister Jackie, Lisa, you all, you all invite some women and just bring them to the, to the land and give them 
let them stay in the dormitory and and just minister to them and get them get them away from their families get them away from the ministry get them mm. uh do some little girly things with them you know play hopscotch and play jacks jump rope whatever you know, <laughs> you know take them back to jump and rope i mean hey florence gavin let's go back to jump and rope double dutch right. Miss, Lord, yeah. Miss, Sue, oh, Miss, Sue, Miss Sue from Alabama. She got the A B C D E F G. She's got J K L F, or you know, mm-hmm. one two three red light, one two three uh, red light, or yeah. play kick the can with them and do something. Just get them away from that daily routine of drudgery. Come on, somebody. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Amen. <laughs> so yeah. a few burnout tips. Spend more time in prayer and the Word. Mm. Regain your lost vision for ministry. Stop comparing yourself to others. Develop relationships with non-Christians. You know, you can be blessed hanging out with non-Christians. Oh. Non-Christians know uh, uh, some of the things you need to know. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying hang out with thugs and, and whoremongers and drug dealers mm. and uh, adulterers and all that, but Mm-hmm. You know, learn how to make friends with non-Christians. You can win mm-hmm. them to Christ. You can also yeah. learn something from them. Yeah. Focus mm-hmm. on the positive. Have fun. When, when's the last time you had some fun? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Nin, 19, let's see, 2011. <laughs> Jackie back. and I got married. We had fun. Mm-hmm. Let's see, did I have any yeah. fun in 2013? Mm-hmm. Did I have any fun in 2019? Mm. It's 2020. I can learn how to have some fun again. And then you might say, what is fun? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cut off draining relationships. Ladies and gentlemen, some of us need to cut off draining relationships. If that relationship keeps pulling you down mm-hmm. and draining you, it's time to cut it off. Cut it loose. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do things that energize you. Do things that energize you. Get in better mm-hmm. physical shape. Stop laying around uh-huh. doing nothing. I take my mm-hmm. naps, but also I take my walks. Mm-hmm. Do things to get in better physical shape. And yeah. commit to have a spirit of a servant. Here's another one. Pray for your community. Stop mm-hmm. grumbling and complaining about your, your city and your state or your nation, pray. Pray mm-hmm. that God change America. Stop mm-hmm. grumbling about America. Pray for a change in America. Pray for a righteous mm-hmm. government. Pray for honest government. Pray that yeah. God get rid of all these liars and put some truth tellers in office. Yeah, pray. Yeah. Pray. Mm-hmm. Trust God for these changes. Well, these are just some things that uh, God has given us um, about ministers' burnout, and there's much more. Um, hopefully we'll put this book form in a couple months and have it available so that it can bless people all over the world. Mm-hmm. But let me give you the remedy. The remedy. We read this in Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30. Jesus said, Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Mm-hmm. Jesus is saying, come unto me, all of you who are burnt out. You're mm-hmm. burnt out. You, you're just weary, worn down, beat down, dried up, crunched, crushed, frustrated. Come unto me, Jesus says. Yeah. All of you who labor and are heavy laden. And he promises, Jesus promises, I will give you rest. But you've got to take the time out, ladies and gentlemen, and come to Jesus. You've got to call on him and on him alone and realize only he has the answer to your need. You've got to throw those cigars away. That box of cigars you're puffing on, they ain't doing you any good. Just messing up your lungs and your internal organs and your bloodstream. Messing up your breathing. Throw so away that bottle of, 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 of those bottles of liquor you got in that cabinet. <laughs> those, 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 those 
40s you got in your refrigerator or those you're going to uh, put on ice. Stop drinking mm -hmm. that mess. Stop <laughs> drinking that wine. Those mm -hmm. drugs. I mean, stop buying those drugs. Tell that drug dealer, hey, you're out of here. You're out mm -hmm. of my life. Do a Michael yep. Jackson. <laughs> She's out of my life. But he was singing to a llama. Well, don't sing to the llama. Sing to the drug dealer. You're out of my life. Stop buying mm -hmm. those drugs. Stop smoking that cannabis. Stop chewing on those uh, uh, cannabis gel caps or softies. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 just stop it. Stop taking the pills. Oh. Unless the doctor says you have to. Mm -hmm. okay. Jesus said, come unto me. Mm -hmm. And when we really come to Jesus, when we really humble ourselves and repent of our sins, and we really say, God, I've been seeking healing through medication, through liquor, through sex, through drugs, through friendships, through relationships, and it ain't working. I repent, Lord God. I come to you. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Then he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. That means you got to start studying your Bible. Mm. It means you start studying your Bible. Don't start and stop. Start and stop. we got a lot of people in the school of ministry. They, they're good at starting. But we're looking at people who are going to endure. Stick with it. we got people, mm -hmm. you, after their first or second homework assignment, they're finished with the school. Well, I wanted to go to school, but the assignments were too good. The assignments are not too heavy because you haven't learned how to allot your time. You've got to learn how to study. You've got to study to show yourself approved of the God. If you can look at 18 hours of Hallmark movies every day, if you can look at 18 hours of, of uh, uh, Judge Joe Brown reruns, if you can look at 18 hours of, 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 of dramas, situation comes and all that, if you can look at 18 hours of old Western movies, <laughs> you can study the Bible. Uh -huh. You can study the Bible. Some of you have been watching so much gun smoke, so many gun smoke reruns, you can close mm -hmm. your eyes when the music comes on. And you can keep your eyes closed, and you can tell your friends exactly when Matt Dillon's going to draw his gun and shoot that dude. Okay. With your eyes closed. Uh -huh. But Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor. You're frustrated? You're burned out? You're overworked? You're being exploited, manipulated, oppressed, abused? You're sick, run down, beaten, worn? Come to me. Come to me. Pastor, you, you tired of those lame sermons you've been preaching every Sunday? Ain't touching nobody's heart. Ain't changing nobody. Still got ungodly people sitting on your board of directors. Still got liars uh, sitting with you in the pulpit, whoremongers uh, in the choir. Your sermons aren't touching anybody. Come to me. Come to me. I'll, I'll teach you a new way to preach. But it means you've got to spend time with me. And, and Pastor Spouse, uh, you've got to spend more time with me. You've got to turn your husband over to me. Or you've got to turn your wife over to me. Let me work with them. At the same time, let me work in you. Let me show you a new way. And then Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. You're not going to come to Jesus arrogantly. You can't approach God with a, an attitude. No. You can't even come to God with a proud spirit. Well, you know, God, this is Pastor Leroy Carter. You know, you're, you're only man for life only in Georgia. And, and you, you know me, God. You send me, I'll go. And, I, and I've been here and I've been there and I've been there. Shut up, Leroy Carter. Shut up. Uh -huh. Humble yourself before the Lord. God, I need oh, you. Yeah. Help me. Don't be afraid to cry out, ladies and gentlemen. Help me, God. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and then learn how to receive his help. If God sends some fresh new people to the ministry to help you in the church, let them do. Mm-hmm. Don't try to control them and, and manipulate them. Let them do. If they make mistakes, let them do. Sit down with them and make corrections. But appreciate the fact that God has sent you some fresh new blood. Mm. And then when God sends you fresh new blood, tell the people in the congregation, you know, those lazy, no count, no good, uh, seat warming, taking up space folks who've been doing that for 30 years, don't want anybody coming in, making any change. You tell them to either find another church or let these people do what God has sent them to do. Some of you pastors need to get you a pair. Mm-hmm. You men know what I'm talking about. You need to get you a pair. Mm-hmm. Got <laughs> and learn how to clean house. And mm-hmm. let God's church be God's church. Not Deacon so-and-so's church. Not Mother so-and-so's church. You mm-hmm. need to get you a pair. Well, they pay my salary. Well... Keep letting them pay your salary. You'll find out you'll be broke, busted, disgusted, burnt out, worn out. Mm-hmm. And with no anointing in your life because you turn your heart against God. Jesus said, come unto me. All ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Mm-hmm. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy. When Jesus says, my yoke is easy, that means you don't have to kill yourself doing ministry, Gene Bratton. Mm -hmm. Sam Gale, you don't have to kill yourself doing ministry. Elijah, you don't have to kill yourself doing ministry. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And then, you know, you'll find yourself, ladies and gentlemen, hmm, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. I got my dinner prepared for the night. Mm-hmm. I got the house clean, all this. Ain't nothing on TV. I think mm-hmm. I'll take me a nap. That's how it starts, girl. That's how it starts. Gene, that's how it starts. Wes, that's how it starts. I think I'll take me a nap. Mm-hmm. And then I the do. next day you say, hmm, that was a good nap. Yes, I think I'll do it again. In other words, you'll find out you don't have to be the center of all activity and you don't have to work yourself to a frazzle to do the will of God. You take your nap, then you get up refreshed, and then when your phone rings, you have an opportunity to pray for somebody or to minister to someone or minister deliverance. You are refreshed and a fresh anointing. Is upon you. Mm-hmm. Hey, this is Leroy Carter. I uh, just want to share some things with you and how to avoid ministry burnout, how to avoid it. And you'll say, well, Pastor, you're talking about how to avoid, avoid ministerial burnout. Well, I'm already burnt out. Mm-hmm. Good, good. I'm glad you recognize that. You're at the right place at the right time to see how you can get out of this dilemma that you're in. Mm-hmm. We, we, we're, we're, we're talking about that next Sunday, Lord willing. Praise God. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. Praise you and honor you. Bless your people, Lord, from coast to coast and nation to nation. Help us to come mm-hmm. to you, all of us who, are, who labor and are heavy laden. Help us to take your yoke upon us and learn of you. For you're meek and lowly in heart, Help us to find a rest unto our souls, for your yoke is easy, your burden is light. Pour out our refreshing upon us, God. Send revival, Lord, to the nation and the nations. Send revival to the government. Send revival to the church. Send revival to our homes. Send revival to us individually. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, we're going to end the recording, but I sure hope you all stay on for any questions or comments or anything we need to attend to in the chat window. It was a joy just sharing with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if you have any questions that you'd like to talk to me about personally, uh, send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or send me a text, or, or let me know on Facebook you'd like to talk to me personally, and we make arrangements for that. Praise God.